What's up, guys? I'm Lindsay Sterling, and you're watching iHeartRadio's exclusive Ask Anything chat. And thank you guys so much for tuning in, and also thank you for sending your questions. Um, okay, so how did the new documentary come about? Um, I originally wanted to do it because I wanted to do a tour doc and get life behind the scenes, but also I just really wanted to capture the live show. I always love putting together these shows and it's so sad to me that they come to an end and no one ever sees them again. It's such a creation of, you know, a piece of me that's on stage. So it was really cool to just capture it all um, really well. So that was part of the reason I wanted to do it in the originally. So thank you, Gail from DeCobb, for sending in that question. Jean from Glendale says, if you could bust out one go-to carry well, sorry, okay. Jean from Glendale, I live in Glen or near Glendale. If you could bust out one go-to karaoke song, what would it be? Um, it'd probably be, I will survive. Oh, as long as I know how to love, I know I'll stay alive. That's, that's a hit every time. Okay. Um, PJ from Orlando. First off, two compliments. Oh, well, thank you, PJ. <laughs> There's nothing hotter than a female violinist. Um, thanks, I never knew that. It was definitely not the case in elementary, junior high, or high school, but I'm glad that that's what you think now. Uh, two, you play wonderfully. If you ever have children, will you play them lullabies on your violin before bed? <gasps> I never thought of that. That's such a good idea, because my mom used to sing to me before I would go to bed, um, and I, like, had a hard time going to bed if my mom didn't. And my dog, Luna, loves it when I practice. She'll actually sit there and watch me practice, and it's, like, the most cutest little thing. I can't imagine how my heart would melt if I got to play for my own kids. That's a great idea. Um, Joanna from Pasadena. How was it? Bleh. Joanna from Pasadena. How was it winning a Billboard Music Award this year? It was awesome. Um, I mean, I was so excited. I was nominated with people that I respect so much. So many artists um, that I love their music and uh, it was actually kind of funny because I met Kygo. I don't know if I should say this, but I met Kygo before, um, right before they announced like the winner. And as I was having a conversation with him, we were both nominated for the same award and I could tell he had no idea who I was. And so it was actually really funny when then a few minutes later they announced who the winner was. And he's probably like, is that girl I was just talking to? <laughs> Anyways, it was kind of funny. So, sorry Kygo. Okay, Ash from Mansfield. Do you have a tour bus when you hit the road? How many violins do you bring with you? And are there numbers or names for those violins? So, yes, I love being on a tour bus. So whenever we can, like in the US and Europe, we always have a bus that we live on. It's like our little home on the road. Um, I always bring several violins. Last tour, I had five. And uh, yes, they all have names. Last time we had Pickles with us. It's a little one. We had um, Cleopatra, Bushwhacker, and um, oh gosh, I'm so sorry, Arwen. They're all named. Trina from Jacksonville. I know this is very sensitive, but may I ask how you overcame your eating disorder? Hmm, that's a very good question. Uh, it's really hard to wrap that up in just a few statements, but um, first of all, I accepted that I had one and that I needed to change. I think that was the hardest part for me was I was in denial for so long. But once I accepted that I had a problem, um, you know, I realized that I was going through depression and I was also anorexic. And it's really hard to have a lot of motivation when you're seriously depressed. Um, so I started with the little things. Like I would talk to my mom about it. You know, finally when I started to talk about it. First just talk to my mom. Then I, I realized I thought terrible thoughts about myself and so I would turn them around. You know, and I wanted, when I looked into the mirror and thought, oh gosh, I look so ugly or I hate what I see. I hate everything I see looking back at me. I would stop and I would change that into a positive statement, even if I didn't believe it. And slowly but surely, step by step, you know, then I, I eventually had the courage to go to therapy, which was extremely helpful. Then group therapy and, you know, step by step before I knew it, I was starting to see my life change. And that gave me the motivation to really move forward and keep on this track. But it started with just baby steps. And um, yeah, it's, it's a process and it took a lot of very cognitive, mental hard work, but um, I'm a very different person now and I would never go back. There's hope for everyone in this. I, I truly believe anyone can be happy. Uh-huh. 